All right, let's jump into the waiver wire wide receivers and it's time for a little who's eating good right now. We'll hit our wide receiver waiver wire ads with who's eating good served by Applebee's and we'll start with Josh Downs right now. And Josh Downs, he's available in 50% of leagues. He's coming off the bye week. Um, you know, interesting matchup against Tampa Bay, who did not look good against the 49ers for sure. And we know no, we sir. know that Downs has been a staple of this offense since Gardner Minshew took over. Look, the last two weeks he's been banged up. He's he's left games early. He's come into it injured as well. But prior to the prior to the last two weeks when he was dealing with a knee injury, right? The four games before that, weeks five through eight. He averaged over 16 fantasy points per game. He had a 21% target share. He was the 13th best wide receiver in fantasy over that four-week stretch, weeks five through eight. And so now you get a Buccaneers defense that's allowing the fourth most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. Down seems to have a connection with Minshew out of the bye, should be fully healthy. If he was dropped in your league because of the bye or because of the lack of production, uh, absolutely 100% go get him. Well, I like him a lot. And I like them a lot against Tampa Bay. Yeah, particularly in this matchup, Tampa Bay are as past funnel as it gets. Think about what they've done lately. You give up uh, to San Francisco, the first perfect passer rating to a 49er since Joe Montana in 1989. Week before that, CJ Stroud throws for almost 500 yards. Uh, so I think that certainly it's a very positive matchup. And also his performance, like it's the injury, like you mentioned, and also just very conservative game script in the Patriots yep. game too. Our sure. next our next one, Jay, DeMario Douglas on, in that Patriots offense. The good news is week 10 before the bye, it looks like he's going to be the guy now. They've dealt with injuries in this wide receiver corps. It's a young player they've been excited about, and you love the matchup against the Giants. The bad news is we have no idea who's throwing him the ball. No. And look, the thing is, is that he's... Or a, if anyone is throwing right, him the ball. Yes. Better question. Can, any, can anyone, anyone throw, throw him, him the, the ball? ball? Yeah. Look, he's had seven targets Wait. in... Zach Wilson to the Patriots. Who says no? <laughs> for what? For nothing? Everybody <laughs> watching football. Yeah. yeah. For, for, you know, for a, a Patriots hoodie. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not a bad trade from a value perspective. Uh, look, he's had seven or more targets in the past three games. Demario Douglas, he is the guy. He's a wide receiver one on an NFL offense, which makes him flex viable most weeks. Uh, and a favorable matchup against the Giants as well. But you certainly have to worry about his ceiling with that quarterback situation, Matthew. 23% target share over the last four weeks. Uh... Kendrick Bourne is out for the year as well. Juju Smith-Schuster is candidly a shell of his former self. And you mentioned this matchup against the Giants over the last four weeks. Only one team in the NFL has allowed more fantasy points to opposing wide receivers than the New York football Giants. I know we've talked about him a lot over the last couple of weeks. I'm t they love DeMario Douglas in New England. In a season where much not a, a lot has not gone right for the offense, DeMario Douglas has been a bright spot. He can't play too good, though, or else he's not going to be catching passes from Drake May next year. No, 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 I know. So exactly. He needs to think about this. Look, no. Belichick plays chess when we all play checkers. Mm. Does he? But I think yeah. he's a checkers guy now. Maybe in 2008. Well, <laughs> but he may not want to be – he might be – you know what? He might be like, I'm going to win this game because I'm not going to be in New England next year, and I don't want them – I don't want somebody – I don't want, you know, Mike Vrabel coming in yeah, here and Yeah, Lovey Smith me. operation. Yeah, with Caleb Williams or – like, yeah. He may want to, like, just stick it to the New England yeah. and make sure they're out of those sweepstakes. We'll find out. If he doesn't, he's going to be a bingo guy after the season. So, <laughs> all right. With that, we'll move over to – Like, uh, wait, who's the, who's, the, who's the offense coordinator of the Vikings that, like, like he, he had been – I'm blanking on the name. But there was a guy that was an offense coordinator for a long – a coach in this league for a long time, and then he was retired. And then, like, the Vikings, when Brad Childress, I think, was the coach – like they brought this guy back because they were like it, everything was so wrong with the offense, and he was literally calling bingo. That's what he had been doing with his time. <laughs> he was a retired guy, but like li John DeFilippo. No, was it wasn't. Was a, Pete, no, you know what I'm talking it's about? Got to be somebody very old. <laughs> no, this is. Uh, I'm going to look this up during the break. Uh, well, go, Pete, do you know the name? What's the name? <laughs> He's going to find it. But I'm telling you, it's a great story. Literally, the guy was – they. I remember watching the game, and they cut up to him, this guy, called, you know, the offensive coordinator or something like that, or a special assistant. I forget what they actually called him. But they shot up to him in the booth, and he's, he's got the headset on, and he's got the, you know, he's got the play sheet, and he's, you know, making notes. And he's got the, you know, they got the glasses and the whole thing. And uh, they literally like, yeah, a week ago this guy was calling bingo, and now he's calling NFL plays. Sherman Lewis? Yeah. Sherman Lewis. Sherman it was Lewis. Sherman Lewis. That's right. Yeah. Your Washington team. Jim's 
But yeah, it was, oh, it was Washington. Washington. Oh, it was for Washington yeah, under Jim, Jim Zorn. Zorn. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's why. That's, that's why, why it makes sense. That's, that's why because we look up such, Minnesota Vikings. Well, he was Gordon. he used to coach for the Vikings. Gotcha. That's what it okay. was. And sure, then he you, came out of yes, retirement. Yes, and then they and then Jim Zorn because it was such a disaster. <laughs> Jim Zorn, who they Jim this Zorn, is a true yeah. story. Jim Zorn, they wanted to be the the Washington. This is how bad it was under Snyder. They wanted Jim Zorn to be the offensive coordinator. But then they couldn't find anyone to be head coach under Snyder. Snyder didn't – no one – or Bruce Allen. Like, literally no one wanted that job. So they just promoted Jim Zorn from coordinator to head coach. And then the, to make it even worse is, like, they won, like, the first eight games of the season. They were, like, six and two. They were, like – like, they no. just got all these kind of lucky, crazy wins, and all of a sudden – and then it all fell apart, and they didn't make the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, but they all, literally were six and two through the first eight games. Luckily, it all came good for the Commanders. Yeah, it end, all turned though. around. Took after Emmanuel that. Forbes so. in the first round. Yes, so Emmanuel forth. Forbes. Our yes. next, our next yeah, name we here. We solved our coaching woes by letting Sean McVay and Kyle Shanahan and Matt Lafleur all Mike walk McDaniel. away. Mike McDaniel yeah. all walk away. All star. Yeah, good time. Good uh, assemble. All yes. right, wide receiver Odell Beckham. We know he, you know, got the shoulder injury last week, but still uh, over 100 yards receiving. Uh, four catches on seven targets. Jay, I mean, you nailed it when you said he just looked like himself. Finally, we've been waiting years for this. Yeah. Just looks so explosive. Just playing with a swagger and a quickness. This is vintage Odell. And Watch also, it wasn't just the one week as well. The touchdown that he scored against Cleveland the week prior, again, vintage Odell. He's worried a little bit about the shoulder injury, which is not well-timed. But if he is healthy and good to go, I mean, he is now he's the number one receiving option, I think, for the Baltimore Ravens, Lamar Jackson. He's the best weapon in that offense. With Mark Andrews out, it's him and Zay Flowers and Beckham getting on the same page with this offense, on the same page with Lamar Jackson, Beckham, who was recruited to Baltimore by Lamar. We all saw the video of those guys FaceTiming and talking. And, and you know, Beckham, who signed with Baltimore before Lamar signed his extension. So you knew that, that, like, there's a connection there. And you see it right there on your screen in terms of the game log. At least seven targets in three of the last five games. At least 40 yards in four of the final five games. Uh, he's really coming to his own three straight games with double-digit fantasy points. He's out there in 70% of leagues. They play the Chargers this week right here on Peacock and NBC, part of Sunday Night Football. The Chargers having their own defensive issues. Oh, yes. <laughs> right. Matt Canada. Hey, Matt Canada to the Chargers. Who says no? Uh, everyone says yeah. no. Yeah. I don't America, know. Brandon America Staley. says no. Canada says no as well. The country, <laughs> not the man. Mexico has no vote. I, um, I was just saying that, like, you know, Staley's press conference, man. All something. right. So I'm just, you know, anyway. We can, we'll go there eventually. Yeah. There's definitely a time and anyway. place. Our final anyway, that'll wide receiver. That'll be our Sunday night game. That'll be our Sunday night That's game. Ravens Chargers. Yeah, welcome in Lamar Jackson. The yes. The Q-Girls Brandon Staley. Yes, Brandon Staley. Our final wide receiver here for who's eating good, Jaden Reed. He's got the Lions. He's available in 64% of leagues. Of course, Packers, Lions, Thanksgiving game, then the Chiefs on Sunday night football, followed by the Giants and the Bucks. So not the worst schedule here for Jaden Reed, who – is not only coming off a receiving week of four catches, 46 yards, but a rushing week with a rushing touchdown here, Matthew. They're starting to use him. Like, this is a rookie. And Jaden Reed, I feel like, could be one of those sneaky uh, rookie wide receivers we talk about who, over the second half of the year, once they get familiar with the offense and the quarterback, kind of help you down the stretch. Very quietly, his snap rate has increased each of the last three weeks. He's had double-digit fantasy points for the past five games. There's a reason why this is somebody we talked about last week. He was on the love list last week as well. Paid off um, uh, in a big way. And you think about this matchup with Detroit. Lions allowed, the, over the last four weeks, Lions allowed the second highest catch rate to the slot, which is where Reed obviously lines up the majority of the time. Feels like Jordan Love is comfortable throwing between the hashes and getting the ball to Reed. Watson, Watson can't stay on the field. He's been very inconsistent. Romeo Dobbs has had moments, but feels like Jaden Reed on a team that might be without Aaron Jones. We're waiting to hear news about Aaron Jones. And, you know, they, they, um, they they're not haven't been able – if they can't run the ball uh, with without Aaron Jones – um, and they lost. They lost Emmanuel Wilson too, right? In and that what, game. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So I mean, like it's AJ Dillon, and like that's it. And they'll they'll bring up Patrick Taylor from the practice squad. I'm sure if Jones can't go or whatever, they'll sign a vet. But still, 
like feels like this may have to be more of a pass heavy offense right. than they want it to be and Reed's going to be a big part of that. Well, Reed gives you an extension in the pass game because of all the short area stuff yeah. you can do uh, with him too. I think the key for Reed is just that Jordan Love looks good for the first time yes. all season. Yeah. The past three weeks, it seems like he's really turned the corner. Now, a lot of that is playing uh, the defense of the Rams and the Chargers in particular, neither of whom have very good defenses. But still, Love is making the throws. Reed uh, is taking on a larger role, and that's been such a strange offense all season. It feels like they've kind of, they're molding into form, and Reed's a big part of that. And here's the next four. Obviously, they play at the Lions on Thanksgiving but then they're home to Kansas City. Don't love that matchup, but then they're at the Giants and home to Tampa Bay. So three of the next four very favorable matchups for Jordan Love, Jane Reed, and the Packers offense. That was Who's Eating Good, served by Applebee's. Let's take a look at some deep league wide receiver targets as well. Zay Jones, 82% available. He's got that Houston secondary, followed by Jamison Williams, who had the big catch last week. He's got the Packers on Thanksgiving, 80% available. 2-2 Atwell against the Cardinals. He's available in 74% of leagues. Puka Nakua dealing with the shoulder. Cooper Cup dealing with the ankle. Both are day-to-day. Could be a bump up for 2-2. And finally, Saints wide receivers Rashid Shahid, available in only 55% of leagues, and A.T. Perry available in 99%, as Michael Thomas is expected to miss some time with a knee injury. Zay Jones in his first game back played 63% of the snaps. He's gotten multiple red zone targets in three of the four games he's played so far this season as well. Uh, 68% of the snaps for Jamison Williams as that Lions offense continues to emerge. We know about the talent, so hopefully Williams, whose snaps have increased each of the last three weeks, continue to earn more and more of a uh, role in that Lions offense. If Cup is out, Atwell would be the uh, beneficiary. And then despite Jay's beloved preseason uh, support, <laughs> Michael Thomas has, in fact, succumbed to injury. Tough R- week for Michael Thomas. Yeah. yeah. It has been <laughs> – there's a very <laughs> there's tough a lot week. Between the construction outside his house, between the injury, it's not great for Michael Thomas. But Rashid Jahid benefits. I mean, I, it's a tough week for Michael Thomas. It's a tough week for analysts who backed Michael Thomas <laughs> in the preseason. But then Connor, kind of 20% Michael Thomas. walked it back, though. 20% walked yeah, it back. Yeah, but then you then were – credit you back- for him doing well a I couple didn't start to get credit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so exactly. I, don't know, I don't know how this works. You have attached yeah. your previously good day <laughs> to Michael yeah. Thomas. Yeah. People you can't tweeting at you. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, but the important part here is that uh, when he went out with the injury, it was kind of split between Rashid Shahid and A.T. Perry. And so I think she, Shahid has the bigger play potential. And maybe over the bye, they've increased his snaps more. Again, he plays special teams. I know they don't want to, like, give him a full, yep. full-time full role. So that's why Perry's in there for deeper league ads. But between the two, I prefer Shahid to Perry. Let's recap Barry's Week 12 top wide receiver waiver targets. Josh Downs comes in at the top there. We've already seen what he could do when healthy this year. Demario Douglas at number two. Odell Beckham at three. We'll keep an eye on his injury status. Jaden Reed taking on an expanded role for the Packers offense as well here. So plenty of viable flex plays on the waiver wire for yeah. wide receivers. And just quick, lastly on Odell, John Harbaugh says it's not expected to be a long-term thing. Which I don't really know what that means. Right. Does that mean he's going to play, play this week? Yeah. That's what I said to my wife yeah. on our first date, by okay. the way. This is not expected to be a long term <laughs> okay. plan. Wow. Yeah. Bad yeah. take. Bad yeah. take. Yes. Yeah. Bad it's take. Like not, on, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just, right. <laughs> just, I don't know. You should throw Whatever, that one in your face like, yeah, every day. 16 years later, you know, here we are. But, like, yeah. What do you I'm know? Still not with Najee Harris in 16 years. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't. I don't. Maybe he'll be on this desk with you. But maybe he's good on TV, Najee. Yeah, yeah. entertaining yeah. guy. Absolutely. All right, I'll, I'll be done in 16 years easily. <laughs> so. I might be done in 16 weeks. We'll see.